Over 10 years have passed since the first Rampage hit arcades. Where do we go from here? Rampage World Tour was released in arcades in 1997, and it was kicking off a new series. The designers of the original Rampage, Brian Collin and Jeff Newman, at Gamer Refuge Inc., returned to develop World Tour for Midway. This reboot would wind up becoming the first in a franchise that would once again span multiple home consoles. Today we're going to look at the very first of what would become many Rampage reboots, the World Tour Era. Like the original, World Tour features George, Lizzie, and Ralph as your city-smashing monsters. Oh, and Ralph is just Ralph now. No more Ralph! Again, you can play up to three players. The screen is no longer stationary. You could travel left or right for a looping environment. A lot has changed since 1986, so there's obviously a lot more going on in this game. More ways to attack a building, including kicks. More environmental hazards, more types of people or power-ups. But in general, the spirit of the first game is here intact. But the best part of World Tour is how they got to take the wacky world of Rampage and expand it. From the start, with Brian Collins' art style and in-game shenanigans, Rampage has been a world of cartoonish satire, and that continues here. You eat everyone from grannies to jugglers in this game. You can bounce off buildings like a trampoline, or flap your arms after falling off of one. There are robots, aliens, whatever you want, kid. You're basically living in a mad magazine. The game's plot has some expansion, too. Now, all of the monsters were created by an evil corporation called Scum Labs. Most of the game, you'll see Scum Labs employee Dr. Elizabeth Verona Boo Bees. The goal is to destroy all of the Scum Labs facilities in the world. However, the path is not linear. During rounds, there are billboards for other destinations, and how you interact with them will point your monster in a new direction. This makes the path to game completion erratic, maybe even frustrating, as you may need to circle back to cities more than once. There's a fun bonus round where your monster sits on an airplane to travel to the next land, and he can pick up some extra points along the way. There's a fourth monster too! If you eat some toxic waste, you'll turn into a gargoyle named Vern, and you can fly around and smash things. But what happened to Lester? From the Atari Lynx port of the original Rampage? Maybe he's all strung out in a crack house. Crack mouse. I'll always have nostalgia for the first game, but Rampage World Tour is a good update in my opinion. It carries over some of the highs and lows of the original. For example, while cities look more different from each other, the game still has a sense of endless redundancy. There are still a lot of levels to punch through, it's a grind! And how you feel about that in the first game will likely be the same here. Also, now there's a time limit, which you can't see. Take too long to smash a city, and jets will swoop in and do it for you? That's weird. When you do destroy all of Scum Labs, a mutated version of Demonic appears as your antagonist. You fly to space to fight him on the moon, and then smash the moon base. Once you win here, Veronica, the only Scum Lab survivor, hits you with a shrink ray. The same year, World Tour was ported to the PS1, N64, and Sega Saturn. Here's the PS1 version, and it's a worthy port. It does the job. The days where every system has a dramatically different version of the game are behind us now. In fact, the only thing worth pointing out here is that you can only play up to three players in the N64 version, while the other consoles are just two players. And in the end, Lizzie doesn't jump on Veronica's boobs in any of these ports. World Tour also got a port on Game Boy Color, so yeah, this is gonna look different. The system does its best to keep the vibe and story intact, but this is inevitably gonna be a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy. The frame rate of the monsters is more than you'd expect though, helping to give this a little extra something something. And to its credit, this whole presentation was never meant to be blown up this big. It actually looks more impressive on a small Game Boy screen. But I don't think the compromises that were made rob you of the spirit of the game, so if this is the only possible way you can play World Tour, it could have been worse. 
In 1999, the first sequel to World Tour went straight to home consoles, Rampage 2 Universal Tour. This one skips the Saturn and only came to the N64 and PlayStation 1. Instead of using Veronica to drive the narrative, this game relies on the WBC News Network and a satirical version of Ted Koppel. Story. He explains that George, Ralph, and Lizzie are still captured and are now tourist attractions, but they're going to be separated. George will go to New York because King Kong. Lizzie will go to Tokyo, so maybe there's a little Godzilla in her after all. And Ralph goes to London. American Werewolf in London, I think? And you choose who you'll rescue first. And you rescue them as new monsters. Yes, yeah, Scumlab, who's back somehow, made more monsters. Is Boris a rhino monster? Ruby, a lobster? And a rat named Curtis. You already had a rat monster! What happened to Lester? Was Lester not worthy of appearing on anything outside of the Atari Lynx? As you can see, each monster here has a different balance of talents. There's an air raid time limit again, represented by an annoying alarm that goes off if you spend too much time enjoying the level. Each location you go to is a grind with what feels like endless levels. Levels that aren't profoundly different than World Tour. In fact, I feel like I'm playing World Tour again. Sure, there are some new features, like each monster has a special move. But otherwise, this feels like more of the same. And by the way, if this is Universal Tour, shouldn't I be traveling the universe? Yeah, that happens, but not for a long time. It's a hell of a grind to get to the whole gimmick of the game. When you free the original monsters, then aliens invade and you go to Area 51 to rescue another playable monster named Mucus. Then you chase the aliens into space, and finally you start jumping from planet to planet, moon to moon. And even there, everything works the same, it's just all reskinned. What a wasted opportunity to do something like, off the top of my head, play with gravity mechanics. Finally, when you smash every location, you get a little gag ending with an alien doing a news broadcast. We will. The N64 version doesn't have the cut scene with the news anchor, but instead opts for these still images. Otherwise, either version is fine. Like its predecessor, Universal Tour was ported to Game Boy Color as well. And get this, this is one of those rare games that won't work on a Super Game Boy. What bullshit! Otherwise, this is more of the same. It looks and plays similar to the other Game Boy game, but you do get the additional monsters. The worst part of any giant monster game is the relentless attack of the military represented by tiny dots coming in every direction. It's so irritating! I guess I really am thinking like a giant monster now. The Last of the Tour trilogy only came out on the PlayStation 1! And it came out the very next year! Rampage Through Time is also the rarest and therefore most expensive of the Rampage home media. That's the bad news. The good news is you can skip this one, cause I can't stand it! It again opens with the WBC news anchor. This time around he explains that Scum Labs is meddling with time travel, and the monsters from the previous game, plus one new one named Harley, also jump in the time portal. By the way, this bit here may be redundant, but it does have my favorite joke of the entire series. Just look at this guy's face at the very end. In the normal game mode, you get dropped off somewhere in a time period and you do your thing. You don't have to wait for these special levels. Once again, things visually look different, but are essentially the same. It's the same. It's all the same. This is the same. This is Universal Tour in all time-themed levels. And I could live with that, if not for two major terrible differences. Those other two monsters you see are AI. I can't turn that off. Yeah, if you're playing one player mode, you cannot play alone. The computer AI will join you and also be a royal pain in the ass, constantly attacking you while you're trying to get shit done. Imagine playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and instead of shadowing you, Tails just constantly attacked you. That's what this is. This also keeps happening where you're trying to get the screen to move to where you want to go, but the computer is over on the other side fucking around. 
This is a miserable experience. I hate playing the game this way. This is hell. Why can't I turn off the AI? Well, at least this game throws in all these bonus mini games themed to the time you're in. Like here, I'm in the West, so the monsters are actually shooting guns at a gallery. These levels have a certain novelty, but they all go on uncomfortably long. How long? I don't know, I don't see a timer, do you? But you will be over it before it gets to the halfway point. Well, I didn't win, but it's finally over. Now I can... What? Game over? Game over? Oh, these levels aren't really bonus levels, they're actual game levels, and you have to win them to proceed. These levels aren't even Rampage! Imagine playing Sonic 2, and then it's like, now you have to beat this level of Qbert or the whole game's over. What the hell? This, paired with the AI, make this game unbearable for me. But you don't need three Rampage games. I mean, unless you really love Rampage. Otherwise, one is just fine. In which case, I recommend the second one, Universal Tour. It's got practically everything World Tour has, but with more monsters and space levels. The following year, in 2001, another Rampage game would make it to the Game Boy Advance, but it wasn't a port of Rampage Through Time. No, instead it was a puzzle game! Rampage Puzzle Attack. And no matter how I try to capture this game footage, I can't seem to get the sound, but whatever, we won't be on this long. It's a puzzle game, what do you want to hear? You drop blocks to match colors. I guess this one's unique because of the way you align the colors as they come down, which is... Well, it's, it's annoying more than anything. Honestly, this game feels like a frustrating version of Super Puzzle Fighter Turbo. A game I was once addicted to, and is also available on Game Boy Advance. Rampage would take a much needed break for a little bit after this. I mean, listen, I love Rampage, but even I'm a little like... This is a lot of Rampage! Thankfully, its next outing would be a massive improvement. And we'll get to that game and more in Rampage More Sequels! Coming soon, and it won't be too long, don't worry.